I want to talk about a very important class of functions called rational functions. A rational function is one that can be written f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. Now, f of x is defined for any number x unless q of x, the denominator, equals 0. So the domain will be all real numbers except those that make the denominator 0. And the zeros of a rational function will be the zeros of the numerator just as long as they are not also zeros of the denominator. So let's uh, practice using these definitions in an example. Each of these three is a rational function, polynomial divided by polynomial, so p of x over q of x. Now, find the domain and zeros. The domain of this function are, is going to be all real numbers except where the denominator is 0. So where's the denominator 0? 2x minus 5 equals 0 when 2x equals 5. So we divide by 2, x equals 5 halves. So the domain is all real numbers except 5 halves. All real numbers except 5 halves. Now, what are the zeros? For the zeros, we look to the numerator. When is the numerator equal to 0? 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now this looks like it's factorable, so I'm going to try to factor it. 2x, x. I need a 3 and a 1. Now if I put negative 3 here and plus 1 here, I'll get x minus 6x, negative 5x. That works. And that means that x equals negative 1 half and x equals 3 are both zeros of this function. And because neither of those zeros is also a zero of the denominator, these are going to be zeros of my function. So the zeros are negative 1 half x equals 3. OK, let's take a look at this guy. What's the domain? Well, first we have to figure out where the, where the denominator equals 0. So x squared minus 4x equals 0. I can factor this. It equals 0 when x is 0 or 4. So the domain will be all real numbers except 0 or 4. All real numbers except 0 or 4. Now, for the zeros of the function, the numbers that make this function 0, we look to the numerator. x squared minus 1 equals 0. And that's really easy. x squared equals 1. x equals plus or minus 1. So as long as plus or minus 1 are not also zeros of the denominator, these are zeros of my function. So the zeros are plus and minus 1. Finally, let's look, look at this function. This denominator, I can um, find the zeros by factoring. x cubed minus x squared minus 6x equals 0. So we get x times x squared minus x minus 6. And this can also be factored. Looks like it's going to be x and x. I need maybe a 2 and a 3. If I go minus 3 plus 2, I get my mi minus 6. And I get minus 3x plus 2x, negative x. That works. So the zeros of the denominator are x equals 0, 3, or negative 2. So the domain will be all real numbers except those three. Domain. All reals except 0, 3, or negative 2. And then what about the zeros of this function? Let's look at the numerator. x squared minus 4 equals 0 means x squared equals 4. So x is plus or minus 2. Now, here's a case where one of the zeros of the numerator is also a zero of the denominator. Now, because 2 is a zero of both the numerator and denominator, the function is not going to be defined there. So you can't say that the function's value is zero there. It's not a zero. The only zero will then be negative 2. Again, I'm sorry, actually negative 2 is, the, is, the, is where it's undefined, so positive 2. Well, let me just clarify. 
The function is not defined at negative 2, so negative 2 can't be a 0. So it has to be positive 2 only.